and welcome back to the Citizen Channel. Hope you all stay safe and well. And this is the first of probably three or four uh, looks at our boys in the Euros, of course. City boys, that's all we're interested in. I don't really care about anybody else's boys. Uh, I could think that other players have good games, but this is about City players. So we're going to have a look at how we're doing, the good and the bad. I'll try and be honest as well. Of course, we're getting a bit of stick that pet players can't play outside of the system, but hey, there you go. Nothing changes, does it? At least uh, I think generally only, I think Phil's got the most stick hasn't he uh, for England but I think uh, he's been defended generally on TV by the pundits anyway but uh, we'll have a talk about it anyway we'll have a talk individually about the players what other people are thinking and my views on that as well so I'll try and be realistic on how match day one's gone but to be honest with you the sooner you get the not the sooner they all get knocked out and come back to us uh, I'll be very very happy I'm um, sorry that's just how it is that's how I feel so before that guys just let me take a minute to uh, if, you, if you can out of your time just to uh, Put uh, a little shout out to my friends at Two Hands Stationery. Yeah, it's just got a great set of pens, uh, 12 pens, all black, uh, fine point ink pens, pigments, pens, technical drawing. Uh, they're all waterproof for art, watercolour, sketching, any manga, scrapbooking, etc. I've got my set here. I do my labelling, do all my manual notes when I'm doing research and stuff with them. Uh, just great value for money because uh, I can give you extra off as well. They're uh, 8 49 at the moment on the site. The links are below and in the description and you can get an extra 15% off at checkout as well just put that code in that's up there uh, for friends of the channel so uh, do that give them your support as they've supported me uh, and just great value 4.4 out of 5 the rating on Amazon almost 5,000 reviews so it's not just me saying they're, they're pretty good great value for money so anyway uh, have a look at those guys if you've bought a set of pens you might have never buy another set for god knows how many years right back to match day I want to look at our players and let's start at the very beginning we'll start at the 15th of June 2024 and it was Group A Hungary 1 Switzerland 3 of course a winning start for Manuel I was happy for him at the centre of the Swiss defence he, he played the full 90 minutes uh, most of our players uh, got a full game in a few came off with a few minutes to spare uh, ratings on Manuel uh, caught offside website give him a 7 that was ok and said uh, as clean on the ball as you'd expect from a Manchester City centre back Correct. Uh, not played in the city, he played in the system and stood up well to the Hungarian pressure. Sam Brooks from the Daily Fail, sorry, Mail, uh, not as convinced. He said, uh, for no surprise, uh, solid enough at the bat, but we'll know that he should have scored with a close range header from a corner late in the first half. I must have missed that one. Uh, I think he's been a bit unfair there, but uh, no, no, no surprise from Sam Brooks, in fairness. Uh, on to the next one was Group B, of course, Spain 3, Croatia 0. Uh, joy for Rodri, uh, but not so much for Kovacic and Gavardio in this one. Rodri, as you'd expect, was in the thick of things from a, a pre-assist to giving a penalty away, uh, a bit dubious, I'm still not convinced he touched him, uh, getting a yellow, um, many thought he should have been, have been a red, uh, again he didn't touch him, why would he get a red, uh, he played 86 minutes and appears to have a bit of a knock but he seems to be moving okay so I've not heard anything since then so he should be alright, Kovacic and Gavardi will have chances but Croatia struggled and with the game lost, Kovacic was, I think, taken off to be rested on about 65 minutes. Uh, some ratings. Joe Bernstein for the Mail gave Rodri a 7. His usual commanding self, he said, oh, so, oh, it's not, I won't call it the Daily Fail then. He gave him a 7. His usual commanding self and had a role in Morata's goal with a cute little pass to Pedri. Took the captain's armband when Morata went off, but for conceding a penalty, which Croatia failed to convert. That's all that matters then, isn't it? Josko uh, Gavardio, just give him a 6. He said Croatia took a leaf out of Manchester City his book and played him at left back went close with a cross shot but he and Stanisic didn't communicate so that often too often both full backs were caught upfield yeah well we know he's not a greatest thing defending is it Matteo Kovacic got a 7 by far Croatia's most dynamic player yeah I'd agree his shot was saved by Simon soon after Morata had scored one mazy run led to panic in the Spanish defence which should have produced a goal for his side Okay, uh, I think seven's fair enough. I'm not going to comment on that. I, th I think we know what Kovacic is capable of doing. Uh, the online website, uh, goal.com, they gave Rodri a seven out of ten. They said for much of the contest, he anchors Spain's midfield well, just as he does for City. But he undid his good work somewhat by giving away a penalty late on one that was saved mine. So, yeah, I uh, I agree with principle. Yeah, as I say, I'm still dubious about the penalty play. Alex Pattel of the Independent gave 
Josko Guardiola, five. The best of Croatia's defenders, although that was more a result of his efforts going forward. Yeah, a bit harsh, a bit harsh from Alex, prattling on there. Uh, Maciej Kovacic, he gave a six, a bit better again, not over the top. He said, helped to orchestrate a spell of Croatian comfort and frequently drove forward with promise. His finishing let him down, however, and he departed with Modric in the second half. Yeah, I think we know Kovacic isn't going to score many goals, so that's no surprise again to us. 16 for June. Group D, Poland 1, the Netherlands 2, and I think one of our best performers of match day 1, uh, Nathan Aki, had a very good game, helped himself to an assist, and another, yeah, took a slight deflection, but that still classes as an assist, it was probably going in the right direction, and if his finishing had been better, may have had another one or two, yeah, well, he's not a striker, is he? Uh, a very good forward-thinking performance, one we don't see too much of at City, actually, I think, yeah, I think he was more utilised in a forward role, and we see glimpses of it, of course we do, but Pep doesn't really depend on him too much for that but it was nice to see uh, international lab, uh, level he came off on 87 minutes just after, after Netherlands had took the lead just to just to give him a rest for that few minutes and break up the game of course uh, Michael Pavitt of the Daily Fail Mail, uh, give, yeah, I'll say mail because he give him eight out of ten. Nathan Aki eight out of ten. Excellent anticipation to cut out Poland's clearance. He said before feeding Gakpo to level the match, tidy in possessions as expected, and slotted in from left back to form a three-man defence as, as uh, Dumfries pushed on. His drive forward also created the Dutch winner, albeit his pass was aided by a deflection. That's what I've already said that. Uh, Goal.com, what do they think? Well, they give him 9 out of 10. Thank you. I like Goal.com, but I don't really, but on this case I do. Nathan Aki, 9 out of 10. Basically a third centre-back when the Netherlands were in possession. Made a couple of excellent interventions. Also caused problems when he did step forward, and he ended up with assists for both goals. So Nathan did okay, didn't he? On to Group C, and probably the one we're interested in, English fans anyway, my pardon to anybody outside of England, but Serbia nil, England won. A pre-assist for Walker, uh, those things exist, well I've created it anyway. A solid Stones display, but Foden looked a little out of his out of it, and I think his body language said it all, he just wasn't getting the ball in the right places, he wasn't particularly playing in the right place that he likes to play. Uh, but of course... Uh, it was fairly poor on that left-hand side with him and Trippier. didn't really work, did it? Nothing much happened. But it's all about Bellingham, isn't it, with England? Uh, you know, with Bellingham, everything has to work through him and that sort of stime is folding in the way that perhaps a little bit he got that when KDB was was in his pomp. But obviously this he's changed, hasn't he, this season? He made lots of runs, but just not picked out into those pockets. Uh, a couple of loose passes, though, as well, when he did have the ball. So, even when he did it, he wasn't, you know, it wasn't he wasn't quite at his best. I didn't think. Uh, Jacob Steinberg from the Guardian on our players. He said, "If Kyle Walker breakthrough stemmed from his piercing pass, missed a chance to make it two 0 Defended well. Well, I'll I'll take that with Kyle Walker if he defended well. He give him a seven out of ten, Jacob. Anyway, yeah, for Kyle. Uh, Jacob said about John Stones, look sharp after recovering from illness and and shaking off an ankle injury composed as ever 8 out of 10 oh, I think I like Jacob I'd have to agree with that but I fell out with him a little bit with this one but again you probably can see reasons for it he said about Phil Foden drifted inside to link the play but got crowded out questions remain over his international form <laughs> it's not a question over his international form it's where he's being played I think it's a problem we know how good he is and um, we've got to utilize him gold.com said about our English players Kyle Walker to give him it they give him eight out of ten excellent in attack and defense his through ball helped set up the goal he nearly scored himself after a storming run forward kept things tight on his side defending with authority they said about John Stones oh, they only give him 5 out of 10 goal I don't know what match they were watching he said he lacked sharpness unsurprised after missing much of the season and falling ill last week I don't know where they got that from I think they watched a different game and they also give Phil Folden a 5 out of 10 he said poor by his standards I would agree with that in principle particularly the second half when he gave the ball away an alarmingly high number of times well once or twice is alarmingly and fair enough but again I do accept some of that critique on to Group E on the 17th of June. Belgium nil, Slovakia 1. Kevin De Bruyne and Jeremy Doku could not inspire Belgium as Slovakia grabbed a surprise victory. Yeah, they had enough chances, didn't they, Belgium? Doku came off on 84 minutes and KDB played the full game. Uh, just couldn't just quite inspire anything, could he? Goal.com said of Kevin, he gave him 7 out of 10. That's all right. Drowning in a sea of incompetence. Yeah, I mean, the, the finishing of when he did get it right... 
Um, I've never liked Lukaku. Lukaku, he, he, he can look fantastic one minute and absolute joke the next. His passing was dangerous, but his teammates couldn't make use of it. I'd have to agree with that. Jeremy Doku, though, they give a six, which I think is all right. A bit of, a, uh, again, another a game that we see a lot of with Doku, don't we? Brilliant one minute and then a bit, bit daft. Of course, it was a problem, wasn't it? He, they give him six out of ten and said, anyway, immediately looked dangerous with his skill, but then proved even more dangerous at the other end when he gave the ball away. Well, we just know he's not quite got his defending right yet, has he? Uh, for Slovakia's goal was was lively, but kept getting stuffed out by the defence. Yeah wasn't great. I thought it was okay. One football website said about Jeremy Doku, well, they only give him a 5 out of 10. They said, after a maze run, it looked like Doku was going to take Slovakia apart. However, the confidence may have got to him as he made the key mistake that led to the Slovakian goal. Decision-making at times was not great, even if he had beaten of his man on most occasions. Yeah, a bit like early Jeremy Doku for City, that one. He started well, then he went into a bit of a lull and then we saw a better side of him. So, yeah, I, I won't totally disagree. Uh, there you give Kevin De Bruyne a six. He said KDB tried to create chances for the side before being the most of any player on the pitch. Needed to get on the ball more in the first half as Belgium need him to lead the charge. Well, didn't quite work for Kevin, but he, uh, as I said, I think he was let down by others. And finally for match day one, guys, for this little roundup. On to the 18th of June, the Group F game, Portugal 2, Czechia 1, then the night before, I'm just recording this now. No Nunes, of course, he was on the bench, but a good start for Diaz, and neat generally from Bernardo, without being fantastic. Cancelo, well, I'll mention him, because he's still, in theory, a City player. Was Cancelo, I suppose he came off late on, a, uh, came off, late on of course, uh, was one of those where he didn't quite didn't, didn't quite do enough, didn't he? And Portugal scraped through. Uh, Checha were general. I thought Checha were excellent, working very very hard. But just have a quick look at the players. Nathan Salt for the Daily Mail said about Ruben Diaz. He gave him a six point five. He said I had very little to do in truth. Well, he did it very well, and he will know there are far tougher defensive assignments to come. He's a calming presence and offers good leadership for coach Martinez. I thought a bit, a bit mean. I thought, I thought Diaz, Diaz was excellent. At least two or three uh, really good blocks at crucial times as well. I mean, you, if you're not under the hammer, uh, you know, if you do what you do, that's all you can ask. Uh, Cancelo, Nathan said about Cancelo, give him a six. He said, was given the license to roam, such as Portugal's dominance and the former Man City fullback spent much of the game in attacking areas his best moment was delightfully disguised pass to play Bernardo Silva but he needs to do more in the final third to merit playing there well I think that sort of sums up what we thought at times wasn't it with Cancelo Bernardo Silva got a 6.5 that's not too bad neat and tidy he said as always but he didn't do enough here to crack a stubborn checker rear guard should have taken a shot instead of going for a pass inside the area when played in cleverly by Cancelo yeah it was on his right foot but We've seen Bernardo have a go with things like that, but he was looking for someone else. The Sports Gida website, they rated Ruben Diaz a 7 out of 10. They said, that's better. Ruben Diaz alongside Pepe looked quite settled at the back. He dealt with everything that came down this way. The Manchester City defender won six duels, made four clearances, uh, made one block and created one chance throughout the game. Good game. Uh, Cancelo a 6.5 out of 10. So the Generally kind of sports geeder, of course. Joe Cancelo kept switching flanks, showcasing his versatility. Anyone want to buy him? Uh, but needs to be better with his crossing. He won three duels and made nine recoveries throughout his stay on the pitch. Okay, And Bernardo Silva, yeah, they're very generous. They give him seven out of ten, I'll take that. Bernardo had a decent game, but could have done much more when it came to an offensive stance. Yes, I think he was looking for someone else all the time, wasn't he? And that's, you know, He put in a shift, but more creativity and finesse is expected from him up front. Yeah, Silva created two chances throughout the game. Yeah, I think Bernardo was playing to Martinez's instructions. And that's it, guys. That's the players. What did you think? Of course, as I said, I think Foden came out of it the worst. One or two other players did as well. But for me, City player of match day, well, I'll probably give it just give it Aki. I think Aki was. Let me know what you think. I'll give it Aki. Followed very closely by Diaz. I thought Diaz was excellent last night, but uh, obviously Aki was out. I thought it was outstanding. So, of course, we'll have a look at match day two. Just a quick look at the odds, guys. Uh, yeah, as at the 19th of June, after all the match day one, things have been completed. 
Uh, France, France have joined England as favourites. They're, they're both on four to one. You can get fives on Germany, thirteen to two on Portugal, seven to one to Spain. So, obviously, England were favourites on their own, but of course, are slowly, slowly dwindling now. So we'll see how that goes. So join me next uh, for a roundup of match day two, and hopefully, all our boys do wonderfully. As I said, generally not bad at all, but uh, I'm sure Foden, Foden will be right at it for the next game. Please, if you stuck with me and you like the channel and you're not already subscribed, please do so. Great to have you on board. Press that notification button. Everything City passed, a lot of history stuff coming out over the mid-season break, as you've probably seen if you look through the channel. Uh, great to have you on board. Press that notification button. And you'll also see stuff on the channel for Film and TV, which is another passion of mine. So if you've any interest in that or you know someone who might be, point them in my direction. I'll be very, very grateful. And I'm always after anyone interested in sponsoring or supporting the channel. So uh, just message me on YouTube and we can have a chat about what we can do for each other and of course you can get me on the various socials as well where i post lots of football stuff uh, city mainly and uh, of course uh, film and tv stuff as well so i'm on x and tiktok at the same address at bernard underscore denine i'm on facebook and just at bernard denine or you can just email me guys if you want to have a chat about anything just email me uh, more importantly let me know what you th what you're thinking after match day one of our of our boys and phil and nathan uh, ruben all the guys uh, even cancelo let me let me know what you think about him at the moment and what, when the hell we're going to get rid and get some money for him but we'll see anyway thanks for watching guys join me for match day two which will be out when match day two finishes uh, so they, that's the best plan isn't it so i'll see you all very very soon thanks for watching join me again stay safe everyone come on city boys bye for now